Hey. I like it. Lil Tink. Yeah. Hey. Episode 41 of Alex and Jim <laughs> Analyze Billy Joel Lyrics. 41. Yes. And it took all the way till 49, 41 for me to come into the show with some Billy Joel news. <laughs> There's news? Yes. What's happening? Have you seen the new video for scenes from an Italian restaurant? I have not. I did see a tweet that there was a new one. Yep. And I think I just went, oh, no. And I didn't look at it. <laughs> yeah. Is it great? Yeah, it is. He's not in it. Okay. Um, whoever put it together, I, I'm commissioned by him, I assume, or the record label. Is there an anniversary? I don't know. I was wondering because I wasn't paying enough attention, but maybe, and I will link to that at the end of the episode. That'll be the link. There you go. Because that seems like something worth watching. Um, there, it could be an anniversary of that song, maybe. Maybe what year? Well, that was seventy-seven. Yeah, it's an awkward anniversary. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, it's it's a really good video. It's certainly not the first video to do this, but it's a good version of. It's um, I kind of like it. Looks a little bit like watercolor paintings. Okay being made over and over again gotcha but i like that there's no motion so they don't do an aha and have the brenda and eddie running around or anything <laughs> okay and it's just an interpretation of them it's not anything they don't get in the way of your own imagination which i think is nice that's always good so it's it's more just huh you know and I started the fight when the money got tight and there's a little painting of a lady sitting at the edge of a bed, presumably a waterbed, uh, <laughs> <laughs> looking a little sad, her hand on her knee, just kind of thought in thoughtful pose. But there's not like, it's not overdone where there's also him going <laughs> or anything ridiculous. So it's pretty good. It's worth watching. All right, good. So they didn't try to act out every lyric. No. That's always an annoying video. Yeah. And in fact, the very beginning, Bottle Red, Bottle White is is a drawing coming to life. So it's only one drawing. It's not like Bottle of Red comes at you in a Bottle of White, which that would be maddening. <laughs> yeah. That would be a little... There's a lot of lyrics. Yeah. To, uh... <laughs> okay good well i the only way i watch anything is if you link to it there you go <laughs> so i haven't seen much yeah you and brew mars <laughs> so yeah. hopefully you'll uh, enjoy it in the dark <laughs> so uh uh how was your week by the way so you went golfing went golfing we had a very full weekend of seeing friends and going to dinners and stuff went to a barbecue in jersey yesterday and my writers um lovely full busy suburban style weekend that's great yeah and we've been watching the hell out of squid game on the netflix have you seen squid game no is it great it is kind of great that's awesome uh, it's so weird that not everyone will think it's great i think it's great um it's a korean show what's it called squid game okay um, and I won't tell you much about it. I think you should watch one and see how you feel. I was having this conversation with this roommate that we have. Good guy. But are you, our sense of humor is very different in that he doesn't find a lot funny. <laughs> so, yeah, fine. And I was, but we can have great conversations. We'll often just talk about philosophy over pasta or something. Fantastic. And, uh, but I was talking about a house frustrating i sometimes find it when i find a really good joke and i wish more people enjoyed it and it doesn't <laughs> have to be my joke either sure 
like you can't rally enough uh, fan base for a joke yeah where i feel like it's underappreciated oh girl tell me about it like what's his name um i think i should be leaving that show on netflix uh yeah tim robinson tim robinson there's this sketch he does that's a parody of walk the line uh-huh where it's the if, did, did you have you watched the show i have it's where the guys basically being johnny cash uh-huh composing a song in the moment to get his break yes and then tim interrupts with his dumb lyrics yes and i was thinking god so many people are not like my wife in particular is just gonna go ah and be mad <laughs> <laughs> and it's hard to explain why this is the greatest thing but it is so great yeah and my wife we actually had almost had a fight years ago when i had i'm gonna actually take that back did have a fight <laughs> right when i made her watch too many cooks years ago oh boy I yeah could, yeah loved it i could not get enough of it i thought it was the greatest thing my wife was furious she was like why did you make there there's no fucking point I'm like oh <laughs> yeah that that it there's so no point that yeah. that becomes the point yeah yeah i've i've gotten out of the habit of recommending things to people yeah in, in the way it, but like I, i'll recommend something but obviously i will say i liked it and that's as far as it goes i will never say to somebody you'll like this yeah because you, you that's when you break it <laughs> i will say i really enjoyed this whatever you think of me bring that with you <laughs> to your experience of viewing the thing you know oh. the kind of shit. i'm old now so i've been around long enough that you know what i like and how i am and everything that's wrong with me <laughs> so if you're cool with all that stuff every now and then uh my roommate amari and mary joe in separately will we'll be watching something we find funny and she'll reference that and go see this is funny. Oh, oh <laughs> I'm <no>. like. <laughs> so now a private joke of mine is sometimes I make them watch things that I know they won't understand. Because <laughs> I'm like, to hell with you people. <laughs> uh, I, Sue, will very often say to me, like, I'll say, this is great, right? Isn't this funny? And she will say, I am glad that you like it. And I'm like, all right, that's very political. And I will take it and not dig any deeper. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> Look, we have an understanding. Uh, other semi Billy Joel news. Uh, I was on a game show this week. A ah. you know, one of those internet game shows where you don't win anything. Is it one that I'm familiar with? It's not the Goebel show. Uh, Graham oh, Elwood. One has a show called anything can happen okay and it's got it's really just an excuse for comics to make jokes within the confines of a game show and they lean hard into the part where you get to just screw around which is good great but it's political and one of the segments is republican or democrat they 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 say a quote and you have to say whether it's a Republican or a Democrat, you get one point if you're right, and then you have to say who said it. Ah. And being very a very progressive uh, show, part of the point is sometimes they'll say something, you know, the quote will be, of course, everybody should have free health care, and it'll be like a Republican right. from Bob Bygone era or whatever. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that's the thing. But I uh, plugged our show, because they have pretty good viewers. They, they, it was like 10,000 people watched this thing. It's like wow. obscenely weird. Um, or five, I can't remember, but it was a lot of people. Um, so it's either five or 10,000 people. <laughs> anyway, um, so I, I mentioned our, our podcast and what we talk about, Billy Joel. And then he goes, oh, cool, cool. Then we, hey, let's all talk about golfing now and other white stuff. And you went golfing today. 
<laughs> I did go golfing. I do a lot of white stuff. Well, it, you, in your defense, I believe you're a white fella. It is the way of my people. <laughs> yes. And I do uh, no stuff. So oh, good. Yeah, that's good. No too. There's no way to tell <laughs> what group I belong to. <laughs> This is your, yeah, you'll never be found out. Yeah, I do stand up and I, I observe Passover. That's a hint. Oh, it's a hint, but it's not a great hint. Yeah, true. <laughs> yeah. Uh. So I picked, uh, what did I pick? I picked, you're my home. <laughs> yeah, yes, yeah. you did. And uh, I don't think it had ever occurred to me how countrified that song is. Yeah, that whole album and era of his has a little country flavoring. Yeah, I think that song more than most, like in the instrumentation, it really, I don't think he's trying to sound like him, but I'm like, this could be a John Denver song. Yeah, exactly what I've always thought about this song. Yeah, it's oh, got the, yeah. Don't know if it's one of his old fashioned impressions that he likes to do where I'm like, oh, I would try to write a John Denver song. Yeah but um, it certainly could fit in that category. Yeah, it's definitely sweet. Um, hey, by the way, did you like John Denver growing up? I did. I did too, but do you ever find yourself listening to John Denver? Nope. Me neither. It, was, it happened then. It was fine. I feel like he hung out with the Muppets a lot. Yes, he did. That true. Yeah. <laughs> Whenever I picture him, I see him like surrounded by Muppets. Yeah. I think part of it is because he's he's like he feels to me like the Buck Henry of the Muppet show. <laughs> yeah. In that he hosted, but you're like, was he a cast member? He was a Muppet, right? He was one of the Muppets, right? Yeah, he did. He has a, he looks like some of the Muppets. Yeah. He just fit in really well. Kind of look like Scooter. Yeah. In fact, I bet if you do the research, uh, is that food? That is food. Okay. Um, oh, it's one of our favorites. For me. One of our favorite segments where I got to guess what Alex ordered. Yeah. I was wrong last time. So I'm going to say Chinese food. No. It's never Chinese food. It's never Chinese uh, food. It's a tough guess. Oh, ooh, um, Greek. No, but close. Maybe even close enough that I will tell you. All right, tell me. Arabic. Oh, reasonable. Yeah. So what'd you get? I, you know, it could pass for Greek food, but I got a chicken skewer <laughs> with rice. Oh, yum. Okay. And uh, Sue got some kind of shawarma platter, some hummus and baba ganoush. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, it's real close to Greek. Yeah, here's my opinion on hummus. And that's the other thing people tune in for. <laughs> uh, hummus from an actual place is so delicious. Hummus from a Ralph's or a Vaughn's or even a Trader Joe's, it's not delicious. No, and it's uh, grainy. Yeah. The quality gap is real bad between- It's huge. Store and restaurant hummus. And what it is, folks at home, I'll tell you what it is. They, to package it, have to put in like ascorbic acid or lemon or something to preserve it. Right. And that comes with a flavor that hummus doesn't have. Right. And because hum hummus is so damn neutral, as far as flavor goes. <laughs> it's subtle. That whatever they put in the lemon or whatever just jumps out at you <laughs> same with guacamole yeah. i can't and the pre-made yeah, guacamole is worthless yeah and guacamole worthless. is supposed to be on earth for a half an hour yep you mash it up put stuff in and you eat it and if you do anything to try to hang on to it you pay the price yep you pay in a, a bad movement later and an odd color to the hump to the product itself yes yeah. <laughs> it's supposed to be a beautiful flower that blooms and dies. Yep. Lord. Um, oh, John Denver. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah, yeah. the uh, Lost Muppet. Yeah, I was just going to say that I like Buck Henry. I bet you he would host at the end of the season when all the Muppets so tired from doing cocaine. <laughs> yep. You know, they're very tired, not even putting that much effort in. And yeah. uh, you all know. the pieces are like resubmissions. Yep. Stuff that was cut earlier. Because they just want to get on to damn summer. Yep. They got all their tea times booked. I think that's what comedy writers do. Yeah. <laughs> they go play golf all summer. Yeah, they're hey. all going to LA to try yep. to sell a sitcom. Yep, absolutely. Some of them are going to be famous. Some of them, like Janice, will periodically get booked in your indie comedy show because she's famous. But right. She's not yep. good. She's not... A talking head on one of those uh, list shows. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I bet she's done that. Huh? I feel like uh, a Muppet should do that. Yeah. On like Best Week Ever or whatever, if that show still exists. I think it's, yeah, it's done. It's probably done, but there's versions still. Yeah. Paul of Tompkins, it's worth looking up. I won't give you a link because you already know what you're going to see, but Paul of Tompkins tells a really great story of being in an office building where they film that show. Yeah. Because they're in an office building because that's the kind of budget they had. <laughs> and in the same building, another show that's the same basic show is filming so it's hey remember the 80s and in another place they're like we're also remembering the 80s <laughs> and uh -huh. and he has a great story of yelling at weird al <laughs> oh no because weird al was the guest at the other one why would you yell at weird al oh well i'll i'll watch the story i recommend you watch it He's Keep great. in mind what you know that of me that I like. Oh no! See? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, taking your advice. Yeah, yeah, no, that's smart. Um, so yeah, you're my home. I re I listen to it, and I'm like, I don't. Do you like this song? I do. Okay. Doesn't blow my mind. It's nice. That's what yeah. it is. It's nice. Yeah. I think I like the song. Well, I must like it because I don't dislike it. But your choices. Yeah. But I don't ever hear it and go, ah, right. This, yeah, here we go. Time to rock out. Yeah. And I don't get melancholy from it either. So it doesn't necessarily get me in the feels either. Yeah. It's a good sing along. Yeah. I'll tell you, if he did music like this, this was just the music he did, we would not remember Billy Joel. It would be like... Right. It'd be like John Denver. It'd be like John Denver, where... Because I was thinking about... Because in Spotify and my car, I drive a lot. So I try to put on different things to listen to. And sometimes I'll be like, ah, what do I listen to that I haven't listened to in a long time? And I'll remember, oh, Linda Ronstadt existed. I'll yeah. On. Right? Yeah. I'll put on new stuff and go, oh, this is a mistake. Like <laughs> I'll put on like modern music. I'll be like, maybe Billie Eilish is for me. No, she's not. She's not for me. <laughs> oh no. She's yeah. perfectly nice, but she's not for me. Um, so I'll put on something like Linda Ronset and I'll drive wherever I'm going, and it is perfectly fine. Yeah. One time I was like, well. I haven't listened to John Denver in a long time. And by a long time, I think I was 10. Yeah. Put it on. I was like, oh, this is all right. I think I got to pull over. <laughs> nope. Billy Joel it is. <laughs> yeah. Because don't really care about Grandma's Feather Bed anymore. Yeah. He also, a lot of his stuff was old-fashioned at the time. True. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it is perfectly fine. Yeah. And that's kind of how I feel about this song. It's fine and it's nice. This is a song where, like, uh, women like it, which is not true of much Billy Joel, <laughs> <laughs> I have found. Yeah. 
mostly like, oh, that guy from the 80s. Eh. <laughs> and then this one, they're like, oh, this is nice and sweet. I like this. And you go, oh, well, this, uh, I don't like this that much. Let's uh, not listen to Billy Joel at all for a while. Yeah. <laughs> How about that? Yeah. <laughs> How about that? Yeah. Um, Too bad. There's... Here's what would have made this a better song. Just the sound of a creaking, a house settling. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I will say um, he doesn't complain much in this one. Yeah, that's true. It's like before he was fully formed as a curmudgeon yeah um or he wasn't being himself maybe yeah he had a good morning or something yeah and he cranked it out pretty fast this doesn't feel like a lingering song no i don't think anybody labored over this too much maybe on the music this feels like a completed assignment yeah so it's got a little twang to it very country twang but it's yep. interesting. It's just a little bit of it. So it's not really, it's. Yeah, he didn't go full country. Yeah. He must never do if you it are is, not. Yeah, it is country in the way that uh, sports, the album <laughs> is, yeah, or that sports is 50s music. It isn't really. It isn't really. isn't really 50s music, but it's he does Yeah. And he just stays away from it enough to have crossover appeal. Yes. Yeah. By the way, um, Huey Lewis in the News, strangely easy to re-listen to. You can go back to it. Oh, yeah. Fantastic voice. Yeah. It was exactly what you want. Remember in the 80s, everybody liked the 50s. Yeah. Um, and so you listen to it and you don't, you don't think like, oh, this is 80s music. Yeah. It just feels like, oh, this is an old rock and roll from a non-specific era. Yeah. And right. how very Reagan era to romanticize the 50s and not let anybody call you out on what it was really like. Yeah. yeah like, no, no, no. It was great. The yeah. end. All of it was perfect. <laughs> All of it was perfect for white people. Yeah. <laughs> and nobody had a nuclear bomb shelter in their backyard. <laughs> Oh, where are those yeah. 50 songs? Yeah, and ladies have and ladies had options if they got hit. Yeah. I believe the option was to get uh go into an asylum if you complain too much. I think that's yeah. what the option was. Or you could uh become a teen angel. That's right. <laughs> Never mind how you became one. Yeah. Teen angel shouldn't have popped off. Isn't that how the song goes? <laughs> I think that's it. I think we're gonna lose some of our 10,000 new fans. <laughs> all right here we go this is the lyrics part when you look into my eyes and you see the crazy gypsy in my soul what do people think gypsies are by the way i think um they think they are people who uh, do art and move around a lot yeah like bohemians i think yeah. they confuse bohemians with uh gypsies yeah at least in this context, you're not being a dick about it. So that's nice. <laughs> right. When you, when you look into my eyes and you see the crazy gypsy in my soul, it always comes as a surprise when I feel my withered roots begin to grow. That's a nice turn of phrase, I think. Nice little turn of phrase. It's a little confusing. Metaphor-wise, this whole song is a metaphor. Yeah. And then there are other like unrelated metaphors going sideways from it. Um, yeah, because it's fine. It's a nice, yeah, it's a nice little turn of phrase. And do you think maybe it's a little early then? Because it occurs to me that I get what he's saying when I feel my withered roots begin to grow because I know the title of the song. Yes. So I know exactly what he means, but. Maybe this should have been later after we've established what she is. You know what I mean? Yeah, maybe. Because then that's not confusing at all because the first little chorus, well, I never had a place that I could call my very own. That's all right, my love, because you're my home. You're my home. A straight up metaphor. This yeah. is almost like lyrics you would uh, ditto 
and pass out in your English class in ninth grade to teach metaphors. Right. So you go like, um, you're my home is a metaphor. You are like a house is a simile. And right. that's the difference. If it has like or as in it, it's a simile. <laughs> this is a metaphor. You don't miss teaching, do you? <laughs> no. <laughs> I miss teaching. I do like teaching, but teaching is like 8% of that job. Yeah. And the rest is uh, getting yelled at by students, parents, and uh, principals, suppliers, janitors. Yeah. And all for no dollars an hour. And fuck you for summer, figure out something yep. else. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, I don't miss that. Did you ever see the movie Kindergarten Cop? I may not have. I think I may not have. So there's a scene in it where he punches a parent in the stomach because he realizes the parent has been abusing this kid. Oh, wow. Okay. And I then didn't... the principal calls him into the office and tells him, I know you're not a real, you know, you're not a real teacher because I checked your background and you've been doing these weird things, but the kids seem to like you. And you know what? You're a great teacher. And boy, did it feel great punching that guy? And I was like, was this written by a teacher? <laughs> yeah. Because the principal more or less goes, ah, that was great when you punched that guy in the stomach. <laughs> <laughs> when I was teaching very briefly, I really liked uh, certain movies. Uh, Lean on Me was one of them. Sure. It was a mad, the principal was mad and he yelled at kids a lot. And then they magically showed up the next day and they were good students. <laughs> it was like wish fulfillment. Sure. It was that and like stand and deliver all those like, there was like a spate of teaching movies for a while there. Yeah, that we were all told for sure were based on real teachers and maybe they were. They were based on it, but it was like they left shit out <laughs> for sure. Yeah. Because uh, it, it doesn't happen. Yeah. And you're like, hey, I, I made up a rap song about the presidents and I'm going to do it for you. They, uh, they still uh, think you're shitty and hate you. <laughs> <laughs> and they still don't remember the presidents. And they make fun of your dumb song. And they make fun of your dumb song. And now they would probably put it on TikTok and ruin your life. <laughs> so thanks anyway, teaching. Yeah, so long. Stick teaching. with writing jokes. <laughs> are, are you sure though? Because let me add this in. Pays a lot less too. All right, check back with me. <laughs> um, let me forge ahead. When you touch my weary head, you tell me everything will be all right. You say, use my body for your bed. And my love will keep you warm throughout the night. Gross? Super gross. Yeah. Uh, I, will, I think I will give it a 70s pass. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yep. Um, I'm like, that is a gross, dumb metaphor that was probably fine. Then, yeah. Because that's not what you mean. Yeah. That's not, that's not what you do with a bed. <laughs> yeah, that's if true. you're talking about what I'm thinking about. Yeah. You have an accuracy problem. <laughs> um, yeah. And, or you need a new bed. Or you are <laughs> frequently yeah um use my body for your bed i mean i think yeah, it's fine um, At least there's consent which is nice because she said <laughs> yes that's true you don't usually get the verbal consent in the lyrics yeah um i you mean the second part then my love will keep you warm throughout the night fine I, yeah. that's in a thousand songs yeah perfectly acceptable that's what makes this song fine, but not great, is this is perfectly finely put together as far as the lyrics go, but yeah. it doesn't offer anything new other than it's kind of gross. <laughs> yeah, 
<laughs> it's kind of but sweetly gross yeah yeah so you're like oh, okay that's nice that she said that even though it's gross this like is you, a- you know when you see a gross couple and you're like oh they really like each other yeah. they're being gross this is a theory of mine uh-huh theory is sometimes you'd be better served being raw and dirty because it's less gross all right because if i hear a dude or a lady uh or you know whoever say yeah me and my partner man we got down last night we i mean it was it was a night for fucking and they tell me that i'm fine with you telling me that if as long as we're friends and and we already have established we sort of talk <laughs> right yeah yeah like if this is Don't the just first yell it from a car window yeah <laughs> Yeah, slow down a minute. Because <laughs> that Doppler effect, I'm confused. What do who did what to what? Um, but um, if at that point you describe it too romantically, then shut up. For sure, then shut up. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And and I think this is almost like that. I'd rather you say, hey, let's just screw tonight. You'll feel better in the morning. I'd feel better about that. <laughs> yeah because uh, yeah rather than like uh let me tell you about last night's love making yes exactly like, oh no don't please don't yeah it's, um it's the lover's sketch yeah um, no. <laughs> it's like good, good for you but don't tell people or be like that around other people yeah and it feels a little and it feels so intrusive whereas the other thing doesn't for some reason yeah. If you're telling me because it's just mechanical when you say, oh, we fucked. I'm like, okay, but don't bring me into the feelings of it. Yeah. Those are your feelings. Yeah. You can say it was great. Well, it was so nice. You know, we hadn't done that in a while, but it was great. I don't even want to hear like, we really connected. Like, oh, gross. Yeah. I mean, great. But for you over there. Leave it. Yeah, way, way over there. Oh, I didn't. I let me get the little couplet. Well, I'll never be a stranger. (laughs) I was wrong about that. (laughs) And I'll never be alone. Again, wrong. Wherever we're together, that's my home. Although, actually, he will never be the stranger. That was the problem, right? (laughs) Well, he couldn't make it stick. Yeah. Um, this I think is the prettiest line. Wherever we're together, that's my home. Yeah. That's like sappy to the max, but very sweet and like almost chokes me up. Uh yeah, that part it's good. You the song either needs more or less, and probably what it needs is more. Yeah. Because there's it's pretty brief and stuff, but it needs more of something and a little less of something as well. <laughs> yeah. This song, no bridge, right? No, I don't think. No, it just keeps rolling. This song could have used a nice bridge. This song yeah. could have used, you know what this song needed? This song needs a bridge that isn't a metaphor. That's a little yeah. slice of who these two people are right and an example yeah yeah who whatever his job is at the the fishery or whatever he man imagines this guy does oh you know what i just lied because this the next part coming up is a bridge is it yeah okay well it needs a better bridge (laughs) (laughs) it's close to what we're asking for yeah it's sort of examples but yeah too vague to be considered an example yeah, it, you're right. It needs to be a more personal example of you, not the general idea of you. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and we go, home can be the Pennsylvania Turnpike, Indiana's early morning dew, which I don't like because <laughs> it's Pennsylvania Turnpike. That feels super specific. Yes. And you know who else has early morning dew? everywhere every state (laughs) 
Yeah, countries around the world. I mean, yeah. Scotland is well known for lots oh, yeah. and lots of morning dew. One of your dewier spots on earth. Yeah. Even, but, uh, he needed a certain number of syllables, I guess. Yeah, and he couldn't think of a second thing about Indiana. <laughs> so that might be Indiana's fault. Famous for their dew and their 500 lap car races. <laughs> Home could be the Pennsylvania go full car, Pennsylvania turn, turnpike, Indiana's 500 car race, California's <laughs> freeways. <laughs> <laughs> yep, the famous parkways of uh, Staten Island. The and the uh, French Autobahn is is that uh, French? <laughs> it's German. German Autobahn. There you go. Yeah, yeah. The That's roundabouts okay. of Perry. <laughs> the roundabouts of Perry, yep. <laughs> but no, it's Indiana's early morning dew. Hey, you know what I think about when I think about Indiana? Uh, not a hell of a lot, apparently. Yeah, no. Just kind of wet in the morning. <laughs> Home can be the Pennsylvania Turnpike, Indiana's early morning dew, high up in the hills of California. I'm not sure I love that either, because is California about the hills? Well, I guess it is. Sure, there's, I mean, again, a lot of places got hills. Yeah. Yeah, well, and isn't that what California is the most famous for, is hills? <laughs> the rolling hills. Yeah. Of uh, San Diego? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Home is just another word for you. Oh, it could have been San Diego's early morning dew. That would have fit. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's, yeah, it's weak. Everybody else, so either make it all cars or make it all dew. Hope can, hope can be the Pennsylvania dew. Indiana's <laughs> early morning dew. High up in the hills of California with the dew. Home is just <laughs> another word for dew. <laughs> Uh, yeah no that's weak it really is so yeah it of course i didn't think there was a bridge because there kind of isn't there kind of isn't it's just, just musically it's a bridge but yeah. it doesn't get you anywhere yeah what i want to hear is like here is one time where i felt like you were my home yeah not three vague examples where anybody might feel like anybody else is or a home a bridge about you know growing up and not feeling like you belonged you know whatever but exactly why why is this different than something else <laughs> yes why is this night yeah and uh this is for you <laughs> ah that's <was> pretty good <laughs> <laughs> um this is a first pass yeah this is a first draft yeah it might be well i never had a place that i could call my very own that's all right, my love, because you're my home. That's fine. Oh, yeah. This is why he had to be a crazy gypsy in the first verse. Yeah. We had a home. Yeah. We know now that the gypsy is a very specific thing. Yeah. It's a, a subculture, primarily Romanian. Yes. With people who lived in sort of wagon trains. <laughs> yeah. Caravans. Um, in the 70s, a gypsy just meant somebody who didn't really live anywhere. Yeah. Gypsies, tramps, and thieves, right? Uh, Cher's big opus. Yes. I remember, like, when I was a little kid, you would come home, like, right before dark, right before you were about to get in trouble. And my mom would say, like, where have you been, you gypsy? Oh, and really? Is there somebody who's uh, not where you think they're going to be? Or <laughs> well, somebody who's out and about? Yeah. Roaming around like a gypsy. I was like, okay, I have no frame of reference. I think part of it, though, was whenever you would get home, remember how you'd always throw a baby in the air to distract your mom? <laughs> and then steal all her gold. Yeah. <laughs> remember when you do that? You remember. We're going to get so canceled. <laughs> <laughs> I would do that now yeah. and again. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, that right. Oh, man, talk about stuff you couldn't do now that gypsies tramps and thieves song by Cher, where yeah. she's also dressed up as an indian oh yeah 
She really yeah. laid it on. Yeah, with the feathers that, that were just feathers. <laughs> uh, no meaning attached to them other than I, I've seen them wear these. <laughs> right. No questioning of the context in which they'd wear them. Uh, well, Bob Mackey probably made that. Yeah. You know what Native uh, folks should do? They should just start wearing Pope hats <laughs> and wait for people to complain. Yep. <laughs> no, it's just fashion. <laughs> Obviously, I'm not really the Pope. I'm just uh, play acting. <laughs> I'm just it's almost Halloween. Right. Uh, I know I told you that story, but when I wore the priest collar and the lady thought I was a priest, I felt bad. Yeah. Yeah. Before then, I was wearing a costume. Now I was troubling with her faith. Yeah. Now you were impersonating. Yeah. The, the problem with uh, the white people who wear the uh, headdresses and such is like nobody thinks they're Native American. Right. So they don't end up in that position. Yeah. So no one ever runs up to them and is like, oh, good. I need a poultice. Can you help me design a poultice of uh, local roots? And they have to go, oh, no, I'm just wearing the. That never happened. Yeah. Nope. Uh, yeah. I'm in so much trouble. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Look, I, I don't know if they called it a poultice. That no. seems more like a gypsy thing. All right. <laughs> if I travel all my life and I never get to stop and settle down, long as I have you by my side, there's a roof above and good walls all around. That oh. doesn't track. <laughs> the the metaphor breaks down because yeah. you put too much strain on it yeah and also you didn't say it's like there's walls and a roof <laughs> that would be a simile yeah and also you probably didn't want to say you're my walls and roof <laughs> <laughs> yeah you yeah you pushed it too hard you're my home you can sort of sense the metaphor of it, but when you start getting into like, you're my gutters. Yeah. And uh, my plumbing. Yeah. You're, you're a toilet I sit on <laughs> when I'm sad. You're a, a tax problem I didn't realize that I'd have when I bought you. Yeah. I, you're the reason I'm in over my head. Yeah. And I, and I can't move. Yeah. I, the market flipped. I, in fact, I'm gonna reverse mortgage you. I'm not happy. Oh, now I'm really trapped. <laughs> <laughs> now I owe more than you're worth. <laughs> oh, the bank took you back. Well, oh, good. Wait, uh, Tom Selleck has a good idea how to handle this. <laughs> oh, yeah, it just breaks the hell down. As long as I have you by my side. There's a roof above and good walls all around. No, as long as you have you by your side, you don't mind that there's not walls and a roof. Right. Yeah. This is better than walls and a roof. And now I'm going to preface this. You get to read this one, but I'm going to preface this next one by saying, hey, if you thought the other one was gross. <laughs> <laughs> You're my castle. You're my cabin and my instant pleasure dome. I need you in my house because you're my home. First of all, quickly, I need you in my house. You've been telling us the whole song. You don't have a house. Yeah. So. Yeah. You, are you lying? Yeah. So what happened? Yeah, we need another bridge to explore. You're my home. I still got a house. Yeah. Don't fucking kid yourself. <laughs> I'm not sleeping in the woods over you, but you're welcome to hang out. There is a touch of the of the the Billy Joel that we know. Uh, yeah. Who's the complainer and uh, the kind of misogynistic a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. Uh, and yeah. you know, to his credit, not credit, but he is what. 79 yeah. or something something um but 
there's first of all you're my instant pleasure dome and this is my house but you're my home <laughs> right what about her she might have a house yeah or doesn't she play a part in this house existing no right. okay you're okay yeah. no you just said get all your stuff and you live in my house yeah so why because i said so <laughs> Instant pleasure dome doesn't necessarily imply consent. <laughs> no, although it, Sue has, um, I should ask her to cameo, frankly, because I have forgotten everything she explained about this. Oh, good. But the pleasure dome is a reference to a line from Xanadu, the epic poem by uh, Samuel Coleridge. Okay. Wherein the, <laughs> can you come and say the line? Yeah. You, you, I'll, I'll relay it to you. Did you get that? No, but say it, say it again. In Xanadu did Kubla Khan a stately pleasure dome decree and and so on okay and so the pleasure dome it was a uh in this poem a uh, place uh, created to contain lots of art and beauty uh and that those sorts of pleasures oh okay in the magical land of xanadu which we all know from the uh Roller skating musical. Roller skating mu musical that was the last movie of um, of Fred Astaire, right? Oh. Or was it Gene Kelly? No, it's Gene Kelly, I think. Gene Kelly. That seems right. Yeah, I believe it was Gene Kelly. And it might not even be his very last, but Lord, it sticks out. <laughs> yeah, it's a heck of a way to go out. So knowing it's from the poem, does that make it any less gross? I don't know, because she ain't... <laughs> Because she ain't a painting, and right, it makes it different. Gross. Yeah, it's like it. I think we probably had in our heads like a sci-fi version of the Pleasure Dome, where like, oh, rich astronauts go in there and they get sucked off by a robot or something. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and this is more of a classic literature, and the the idea of like artful pleasures. Yeah. Um, you know what? Uh, like in either case, you're reducing her to yeah. um, something to give you pleasure. Yeah. And what are you doing for her? Well, you, she can say at your house. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know what bothers me the most about the robots that suck you off is the economic in, in, inequity because it's only the rich astronauts. That bothers me. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Everything else about it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah oh uh, well, uh, that's not where you want to cut your budget exactly <laughs> that's true you and don't then want it, a cheap uh, robot. it doesn't fade out but it almost does because it just kind of tinkles away <laughs> it does yeah in that very 70s john denver like i'm done here but uh, okay yeah Catch you guys later. Oh, no encore? All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, bye. bye, you guys. Bye. It's a good John Denver. Bye. <laughs> bye. Oh, did I leave my glasses? Oh, I have more. Yeah, no, Oliver from uh, Brady Bunch is not my kid. <laughs> He's not my kid. That's a coincidence. Oh, that is who he looks like. I don't know why they did that, because... Did they do it so that I at home would go, did they get John Denver's kid for this? Yeah. I think he was very popular at the time. I'm yeah. Sure were, at least subconsciously, people would think like, oh, fucking John Denver's in this. <laughs> must be pretty good. John Denver's in this. He must be pretty good. Also, how old is this show? <laughs> that is a young <laughs> John Denver. Amazing. It's in color. <laughs> oh, Lord. Yeah. You're my castle, great. You're my cabin, all right. My instant pleasure dome. 
Just start calling a shelter. <laughs> yeah, just and uh, and uh, also you help pay the mortgage. A line like that would just make it so nice. <laughs> Thank you for helping me pay part of the mortgage. Thank you for helping me navigate the difficult world of property taxes. Yeah. With and your math degree. Thank you for bringing on your amazing brother as my business manager. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. Thank you. For, uh, your TV is bigger than mine, so we use that instead. Yeah. Great. <laughs> <laughs> It's, you know, the whole thing is a fine metaphor, poorly yeah. executed. Yeah. All told, it's funny how, so a song with okay lyrics and great music can be a great song. Occasionally a song with bad music and amazing lyrics can be great, but that's incredibly rare. They better be amazing lyrics. Yeah. Music kind of needs to be good. I think the lyrics and the music lift each other up a little bit but almost as if the lyrics and the music are are in a codependent relationship because it's not healthy it's not it's not healthy it's just it's better it's certainly not his worst song it's not bad you know it's, it's listenable it's better it's way better musically where you can just sort of sing along with it and it goes away yeah like, oh great that like similar goal I'm going to assert different topic. The lullaby song from his last album. Yeah. Very simple. Accomplishes the goal way better. Yes. Because, well, you're talking about your kid. You're talking about a moment when you might not be there. So you're actually contemplating your own mortality. And because you're talking about your kid, you're not saying anything gross. <laughs> so great. <laughs> Always out. Thank God. Yeah, and that song, and but similarly, musically and lyrically, really, really simple. But I feel intentionally simple, whereas this one, I don't think the intention was to be simple. Right. This was the intention was to be clever. Yeah, or and deep. Or deep. Yeah. Uh, not if it was to be sweet. I think you got there. Yeah. It's sweet. Yeah. A little clunky. It's um. My favorite thing about it is that it's very clearly from before he became uh, a curmudgeon. Um, so it's like, oh, that's he. He used to be nice, or at yeah. least be able to pretend to be, or maybe he was just inauthentic, and then became authentic. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people's authentic selves are worse. <laughs> I think most people's probably. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. So, yeah, but then oh, yeah. yeah, you're a worse person, but a more interesting musician. Yeah. And better lyricist. And now you're kind of funny now and then because you can do that. Yeah. Have, did you ever listen to Billy Joel's show on Sirius? No. I now I don't know if it still exists because I did, like I said, did this game show. And you know, as always happens, people make fun of you for a few minutes for having a show about Billy Joel. And inevitably, at least one person goes, you know what? I saw him in concert. Oh, God, that was a good concert. <laughs> and, yeah. and he goes, and he had this show on Sirius. So I'm like, okay, I think you should also have your own Billy Joel show. Because now you're telling me you listen to a show on Sirius. Yeah, so you, you can definitely stop making fun of me. And he goes, he said, you know, it's just him mumbling about musicians. That, and it sounds like he's a little bit drunk. And my joke was Billy Joel's never been a little bit drunk. That's my joke. Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah. Um, he goes, he's just mumbling about, and that was when, back when they would do this rock and roll thing. And then he plays the most amazing piano music. So, yeah. Get yourself a podcast, bud. You would have liked, you would have liked these guys because they didn't actually end up acting like enjoying Billy Joel is absurd. It was nice. Yeah yeah that's always nice like it's fine you go i don't know but i don't know not for me but the people are like oh, that's the craziest thing oh yeah how can you it's like this music. guy who's had like 12 albums with a bunch of awesome music on it? you like the sixth biggest selling artist of all time that's gross funny. i've never met it's like the jim gaffigan yeah. joke about mcdonald's 
Everybody claims to be grossed out. They sell 47 million burgers. I think someone's a liar. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. You like him. You like him. You like him. Uh, like, what's happening? Scenes from an Italian restaurant. It no? almost could be. It could be a painting in that restaurant. <laughs> it could be. It is definitely a painting. There's a ball happening. Yep. Mm -hmm. And they are doing a, well, they they're objectively doing a very traditional dance. Ah, is it a Viennese waltz? It is. Are they in Vienna? They're not, <laughs> but that would have been a good guess. Um, it's more about the dance itself. Mm, which is a waltz. It is. Uh huh. And I think, let me look it up real quick. <laughs> uh, I believe we've talked about this song. Oh, well, that doesn't narrow it down as much as it used to. That's right. <laughs> and it's definitely not Vienna. Nope. That is a hell of a good guess. And there is not a song named after a dance, is there? I don't think so. I don't think so. No. Waltzing. I don't remember any lyrics about waltzing. I will say the waltz appears in the first lyric of this song. Really? Yep. Wow. And uh, I don't know if this helps at all. But it's funny to me that you picked the song that we talked about. <laughs> that is funny. Right? Waltz. Yep. Um, is it used in reference to the dance, or it is the common idiomatic expression wherein someone waltzed right in here? Oh, let me clarify. You know what uh, it feels to me like it should be in reference to the dance itself, but it couldn't possibly be in that, really. <laughs> wow. Um, I'll tell you what. I'll give you the name of the lady who's doing the dance. Her name's Diane. Diane. You've been, I've been watching you waltz all night, Diane. Yep. Nobody's found a way behind your defenses. Oh, night long. Oh. <laughs> and you'll be sleeping with the television on. Perfect. Well done. We did I, it. I think I did. That wasn't too giveaway -y either. No, that feels right to me. Yeah. Dave. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was about right. Yeah, that was good. There was a little push and pull. Plus, this is a pretty little background. It is a pretty little background. It's a lovely painting. Yeah. I like how whoever painted this, when we start doing our art critic show, uh, I like how the lights in the back look like they're on. They did a good job of drawing yeah, it where they feel, like, lights. they feel like they're glowing. Which is a pretty good trick to pull. Hard to pull off. I like that the guy over your left shoulder uh, looks like he's dancing with two ladies, which is oh, yeah. yeah, but he uh, is very clearly in this world, the world of the painting. Uh, he's a, he's a big shot. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> you got it. It's a big shot. He's a big he's shot. That's what it was. <laughs> uh, that's we did it. Yep. Um, I pulled a trivia question. I not ironically, coincidentally, those are different. Um, that has to do with the first lyric of a song. Oh, because we're running out of trivia, baby. We really are. We really are. So I was like, let me pull the first line of a song. See if Jim can get the song. Okay. Um, and the line is, I play nights in the Spanish part of town.
And I will say to shame you, Sue got it immediately. Right, the Spanish part. And she doesn't even have a podcast. <laughs> They're hard to get. <laughs> they are hard to get. Her, her application fell through. They're like liquor licenses in New York. You got to wait until somebody gives theirs up. Right. <laughs> wow. Okay. I play knights. Hmm. Can I act like I'm thinking and typing? <laughs> um, <laughs> Would be great. What a great thing to cheat on. <laughs> um, is it... Um, there is one album where he does, he has, there's a lot of Spanish influence. Yeah, that's why I, I can picture the title because it's one of the many titles I go, oh, can I get a picture of something from this? It's uh, another uh, lady's song name. Uh, Rosa, lady. Rosalinda's yeah. Eyes? Rosalinda's Eyes. Oh! You did it. Ah, that was even just one guess. Great. That's pretty good. That's about how long that should take. Yeah. Ave. I think we nailed it. We really nailed it. Yeah. It was just the right amount of not getting it. <laughs> Followed by some getting it with yep. hints. Yep. And I think I did pretty good. I know my track record's not good, but I think I did pretty good on the what did you order? Getting oh, absolutely. Close enough. Really good. So I, I think this was so close to correct yeah. out of uh, the 41 times i've guessed it um I don't know, well how many times have i gotten what you ordered right i feel like you got you said pizza a couple of times and it was pizza yeah yeah pizza is always a safe, safe bet um, yeah. and i'm gonna say you don't order chinese food very much yeah we don't get much chinese food hey is that a thing if you're an adult that you order less chinese food because your parents ordered Chinese food. And if you want um, Asian influenced food, you want more spice so you get Thai food or something? <laughs> Not in my case, but it certainly could be a thing. Yeah. We never ordered food. My mom cooked everything all the time, being good Italian. Cook. Good cook? Yeah, very good cook. Nice. Okay. Hated it and complained about it a lot, but was very good at it. Well, you did say she was Italian, so. Yes. All of those things fit. Everything you said fits. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's particularly thrilling for me when I order Italian. I'm like, I get the good food and none of the <laughs> psychological trauma. <laughs> now, is that also on the menu and you just don't order it? <laughs> I think at most places you can pick it up. <laughs> That's nice. Yeah. If you go in and you stay there for too long. Go, can I get the chick parm? And could you be surprisingly judgmental about my job, even though I'm doing pretty good? Yeah. Could you worry about my finances, even though yours are worse? <laughs> I would love that. <laughs> could we have, uh, I will take the, ch the chicken uh, piccata and a fight we've had already, but you seem to <laughs> want to bring up again. Yes. And if you now, could curse me in Italian <laughs> in front of my friends. <laughs> now, I believe you have something else for me. A song? A song. Um, you mentioned it last week. I don't think we've done it. I've always loved it. It is called Half a Mile Away. Great. And we will do that song, I think, in a couple of weeks. Because you got stuff coming up. I got a little stuff. Nice. So next weekend is out. I'm out of town. Um, stay tuned. So, Bruno, if you're not caught up yet, you've got a couple of weeks. Now's a great time. Yeah. And to our 10,000 new fans. Yeah. <laughs> take two weeks. Listen to 41 episodes of this. Yeah. And listening to them in order, it doesn't make sense unless you listen to them in order. You won't get the big puzzle. Lord, don't start at episode 12. No. Just don't. That do one it. stunk. Yeah. <laughs> as, I, as I recall. Uh, half a mile away. Yeah. Half a mile away. That's wonderful. 
And uh, we're going to wrap it up because the other thing Alex likes to do is eat the food he's ordered. It's true. It's the thing he enjoys. It's one of my little weird things that I do. You're, you're one of your ticks. <laughs> <laughs> See you, everybody.